What is going on, Stonebladers? We got an awesome game here of Stoneblade against the four-color Astro Oko Labe Control, whatever the hell you want to call it. Uh, this is pretty much one of the, the biggest control decks around. This is the deck that everyone says makes Stoneblade look uh, outclassed, uh, underperforms to all this other stuff. Uh, every time I read about looking at this deck we're going to be playing as people make it sound like it's impossible to beat um certainly not impossible to beat in fact i would rather play against a deck like this instead of something like storm just because i feel storm is more advantaged uh nevertheless i'm going to show you how we can actually fight off this deck it's not as difficult as it may look and to make even ma to make matters even worse or better however you want to look at it this hand is pretty much atrocious to any type of control deck. However, I had a lot of mana. You know, if I was playing against someone using a ton of non-basics, this can obviously do well. Against the creature deck, it's not too bad. It's pretty slow. Like, this is pretty much a mulligan. I am on the draw. This could have been thrown back, but I went with it because if you watch a lot of my games, I don't like mulliganing. Uh, I just hate being down a card. So, I went with it. Let's keep it. Let's uh, get going. Okay. Of course, I didn't know the deck I was playing against. Sure, you can have it. Okay, so let's pretty much... I'm going to try and talk about every play as much as I can. I know I don't do a lot of videos. did have today off, so you might even get another video. Maybe if I have enough time to upload it and record it, I can throw it forward later uh, in the week or month, whatever it's going to be. Anyway... What I want to do here is uh, I want to play Polluted Delta. I feel Delta might hide the deck that I'm playing a little bit more. So I want Delta. Now, the good thing against a control deck is you want lands. As if Stoneblade didn't need lands enough. They're brainstorming. They might have had a uh, fetch in their hand or they might have drawn one. Either way, that was they pl what they planned on doing. Yeah, anyway, so Stoneblade needs <laughs> lands like crazy. Uh, I went with Island here. At this point, I'm like, I don't care too much if they know what I'm on or don't know what I'm on. The fact of the matter is if I'm not doing anything and they're a control deck, it's going to be very difficult to play any type of Planeswalker or Haymaker into mana that's open. Especially when I, I could still be a lot of decks, technically. Sure. <laughs> okay, let's just draw all the mana. Uh, a Brainstorm would be beautiful. Ironically enough, like, if this person had anything, like, there's pretty much nothing I can do here. I can't, you know, counter anything. I could swords, uh, yeah, one of these dudes, uh, Ice Fang, which I'm not going to do. We'll talk about this guy more often. It's not that bad, um, playing into it. Obviously, swordsing it is bad, because, you know, it's kind of like uh, a little two-for-one, or they're up a card in the exchange. Uh, sometimes you have to do it for tempo, sometimes you have to do it to not lose a ton of life, but in the beginning, this guy's just gonna bite at you like a little pesky mosquito <laughs> for most games. Okay, Stoneblade. Here I believe I started uh, doing stuff. So I think I went with Arid Mesa and Island, I believe. Crack that. Yeah, okay, cool. Let's get some more cards that aren't all that great against this deck, but nevertheless, since we have Batter Skull, the cool thing about having Batter Skull in your hand is a lot of times it can act as a surprise. Usually I'll take like six seconds, you know, when there's only one equipment there, just to make it seem like I was at least trying to decide as opposed to immediately going legit. But if you take too long, they might be suspicious. Just a little uh, mind tactic to think about. What do you got? All right, so this is perfect, okay? These two cards exchanged, and we're up a card now, and we were on the draw, okay? So the game is moving on later. Like, if they had any haymakers, they could have won by now, but uh, maybe they didn't want to play them because of my mana. Whatever it was going to be, we're still stretching out the game, despite the fact our hand is really bad. Like, this is just going to be force food if it even comes to that. Okay, brainstorm, sure. I'm guessing they're doing that because they need their mana for next turn and maybe want to counter something as well. Okay, fetching, storming, probably looking for something good, maybe not. Okay, sure. <laughs> and yet again, more cards that are 
It's not all that great. Uh, this turn, I might have played True Name, or I might have just waited, because, like, I am in no hurry here. If they're not doing anything, that's fine by me. Uh, they might be afraid to, because I'm not tapping out, so... I think I played an island here. I might have played True Name. Okay. <clears throat> I think True Name was next turn. But, like, as long as I keep drawing mana, eventually I'm going to get... <clears throat> excuse me, some type of card <laughs> that's going to do something significant. Okay, that's fine. Sure. Okay, this dude's going to still poke me. Now, the good thing is that, despite the fact that they're going to keep poking me, they're going to start <clears throat> making tokens and artifacts and creatures and all that stuff, at least I have a couple of swords where I can still stall the game much further. I can play True Name, I can actually play like a Batter Skull if they want to turn that into a 3-3. <clears throat> I still have a lot of uh, resources to stall the game until I get something better. Okay, I think I believe here was where I played True Name, so I think it was a Plains... Island, Island, Plains, <clears throat> true name. Force, pitching, force, okay? Cool. And I could play a JIT here. Um, I didn't. I thought it would be better if I just, you know, if I get a brainstorm, I can obviously do something with that. Sure. I mean, I've drawn so many cards that are just, like, mediocre against this deck that eventually, you know, I'm going to draw something good. And there it is. <laughs> okay, uh, let's play uh, Delta, I believe. Let's play Delta. There you go. Uh, just in case we need more mana for some odd reason, but either way, I wanted to play that. Councils, tap in our planes. They have no response. This is good. Okay, so now we can actually go back to stalling the game. As much as it sucks to plow this, because this is pretty much, you know, this was a created card, we're going to be down a card on that. However, I am, you know, up in cards as it is, so that's not going to be a big deal. Now the point of the game that we got Oko off the board is to pretty much stall and protect our life, and obviously do something with our hand. Brainstorm would be amazing. Here I do want to um, stop the bleeding a little, so I am going to plow the uh, food token here. Normally, like, if you're like, hey, let's plow this 3-3 food token, it's normally not a good idea. In this scenario, now I have switched to more of like a protection mode, hand sculpting mode, find a damn card mode, okay? So, uh, things are changing up, they're playing their lands, cool. Means they probably have nothing in their hand, maybe some counter spells, uh, whatever it's going to be. And oh my goodness, oh my goodness, exactly what the doctor ordered. Okay, so, normally I talk about when you get a brainstorm, I like waiting around to see what they're going to play. The fact of the matter is that, <laughs> aside from that councils, which was very clutch, like I need action, I need cards, and I have a lot of cards I can put back, so this is going to be the perfect time to brainstorm, given the fact that not only can I cast it, uh, there we go, but I can throw away cards, I can shuffle them away. So let's see what we got. Okay. Do, 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 do. Let's look at all the cards. Let's uh, move them around. Let's talk about them a little bit. Okay, so first and foremost, I'd say the worst cards here, actually, Batter Skull is not the worst. I mean, it's gonna, it could trade with that if it ends up living, but I'm gonna say this is the worst card in this scenario, followed by one of these two. Uh, Back to Basics has some merit here in case I draw a Force of Will that I can pitch to it, but if I draw a Force of Will, I think hard casting it isn't going to be a problem. So I believe I went with Batter Skull and Back to Basics here. At least if I attach a JIT to a Snapcaster, I can start, you know, picking off more of the Quaddles if they come out. So I believe it was Batter Skull. And um, back to basics, yes, okay, I was correct on that. Let's fetch away. That was like one of the best brainstorms ever. Let's ponder. Okay. This is a, <laughs> now we're finding not actual like amazing cards, but cards to find amazing cards. So there's a lot of things we can do here. I know I don't want the island. Um, Brainstorm's going to be great because, you know, this card isn't the greatest in the world. Uh, I can always fetch and I could always look for more cards. So I believe this is going to be Island, Ponder, Brainstorm. Yes. And I didn't feel like digging anymore. So I said, that's cool. I do have a Ponder on top, which I believe I forgot about, which isn't the worst thing in the world because I still have Brainstorm and... Uh, Couple fetches here. So this dude's gonna keep biting me like an annoying little mosquito, as expected. Sure. Got got nothing, okay? 
that's fine. So I think I forgot I had a ponder here. Having a ponder is certainly not a bad card. I mean, it's actually a really good card. In hindsight, I probably shouldn't have fetched. I think I, I did forget. Uh, but going back to it now, uh, I probably would have kept it, you know, because I still have a ponder and a brainstorm. I can find some pretty serious cards. So, <laughs> and look what I draw instead. I'm like, okay, I guess I'll take that, right? Uh, in this scenario, this person hasn't been playing any cards, so they probably have some type of counter spells in their hand, right? I mean, any Planeswalker they would play, Euro they would play, they'd probably, you know, play another one of these if they had them. So it's got to be some type of counter spell. So I didn't want to play Jace right away, so instead I brainstormed. Go ahead and brainstorm. There we go. Let's see what we got. Okay, so this is good because I can actually fight for a Jace. Like, you know they're going to have at least one counter spell here. So let's look at what we got. Land isn't the worst, although I have a lot of it now. Let's look at the worst cards here. Uh, I want to keep a Swords around because I can. if I need to, I can kill that. If they get a Euro, I can kill that. If I need to, I can Swords my own guy and, uh, you know, do that. So I believe I got rid of one of the lands, and I think in this scenario I got rid of the Jit. So... Uh, keeping the delta means if I crack that, I'm going to lose a life, so that's something to consider. But I think I did keep that because I'm going to be fetching here and I might want one later. So I think this was Jit and Island. Let's see if it was correct. And Island? Okay, so I got rid of the delta. That's fine. That means I'm just preserving life, so that's probably very helpful. Let's do that. Blue, blue, white, white. To make sure we keep up blue for counterspell. What do you got? Perfect. Let's counterspell that as expected. Okay, and they have drawn the lock. That's fine. Okay. You're kind of expecting that they were sitting on something like that. No big deal. What do you got? Okay, sure. Sure. Don't get brainstorm locked. Nope. Not yet. That's what the happens a lot of times with these decks. I mean, I guess that happens with any type of control deck is that you just kind of whiff a lot. You draw air. You draw land. You draw a lot of these, uh, which is good for us in this scenario, obviously. And we have crap on top of our deck, so we got to make sure that we fetch as well. This guy is still not a huge problem. We're at seven life. We're comfortable with that. So, uh, Tundra here. And I have one more land left. And there it is. I draw it. <laughs> so, it's getting close where I have to kind of decide, this dude's going to poke me forever. Uh, do I want to hang around? Uh, I don't have a fetch land where if I utilize a bain Brainstorm with Snapcaster. So, I think my best bet here was just to Snapcaster Ponder. I didn't want to wait around. I mean, if they get an Oko, that means they're making one of these guys a 3-3 and I'm in big trouble. So, I decided to be a little bit more, not aggressive, but it's kind of at a point where I need to do something. I can't sit around too much. So, I went for a uh, Ponder here. There's a Ponder, right? Looks like it was Brainstorm. Yep. Sure. And they have a response. Okay, it's actually not that bad when you consider because um, <clears throat> this isn't going to be used on anything else should I decide to draw something. I mean, I literally have, what is that, five, I have all of my islands, I have all of my planes, I have my tundra. So I probably have, let's see, Pluto Delta. There's one, two, three here, and there's a flooded strand in there. So that's, I have eight, I usually have ten, so that's one, two, three, four, five. So I have five more lands in my deck. And they're just fetches. So, I mean, at this point moving forward, I'm pretty much just going to be drawing good stuff. Or at least I hope I do. Five out of these 34 cards uh, are lands. So, there's a good chance I'm going to be drawing anything that's going to really help me out. Sure. What do you got? Sure. move to end and here I do want to plow this okay because uh, then they're gonna, it's going to be a three turn clock uh, without it, it's going to be five and plus when I plow this one I can actually start attacking in for what it's worth so I know I lose a card on that exchange but like I said when you get to the end of the game it's more about like all right I need to survive I need to find cards it's, it's you're not really worried too much about making the the perfect or right play uh, ponder obviously 
Oh, maybe not so obviously. I guess they have something to say about that. So they had the very aggressive of no matter what they play, I'm countering it. And it may have worked well for them or it may have not. I mean, usually what you want to do, I guess sometimes, is just let the ponder happen and then uh, counter the payoff. But once again, that's getting cards out of their hand. That's fine. I'm not sure if I would play it the same way if I was them. If I was playing it, I probably wouldn't be playing that deck in the first place. Uh, I like Stoneblade, obviously. Nothing against this deck, but I don't like playing this on like turn one and so on and so forth. I happen to like Stoneblade much better, which is why I play it. Okay, cool. You're attacking. So they got nothing. What do we got? <laughs> we got four turns to find something good. Like I said, I have like five, uh, four. <laughs> Let's draw some more. That's fine. This guy is just going to keep biting us like one of those annoying mosquitoes who won't leave you away. Literally all of my lands here, and this too. I have six islands, uh, three plains, and a tundra. So everything else is just going to be uh, fetch lands now. So I'm not going to even bother playing that. I don't even want to crack it because it's taking off a turn. As funny as that sounds. we got to get something good, right? <laughs> Back to basics like a boomerang for you. There we go. Let's uh, Let's attack. Sure. <laughs> okay. And ta-da! Look what we have. This is a great card. This is certainly... Brainstorm must have been the MVP of this game just because it helped me get out of so many uh, crap spots. Let's brainstorm. We're not waiting around for this brainstorm. Then let's analyze. Oh my goodness. Hmm. So the thing here is that Flooded Strand sucks because it's going to pretty much just uh, take away one life, which I don't like. So I believe here, obviously, it's going to be like one of the Back to Basics and Flooded Strand, I believe, or it's going to be Back to Basics and Back to Basics. Um, I don't remember, but obviously I'm going to be playing these. Okay, that's fine. Let's play Narset. <clears throat> Perfect. And Jit. See, this is really good now. Uh, Jit was actually a really good uh, pick up there. So what I can do here, uh, I can go for Jace. However, um, if they have another Ice Fang and they play that at the end of the turn, I die. So what I want to do here is just simply play Jit, equip it. And make them have to like decay it or swords me or something like that. That's what I'm gonna plan on. Like, uh, if they have some type of if they have another ice fang, I'm going to lose. But at least if this gets to come through, I at least get to you know kill some of their dudes. So that is what I went with. They've shown that they don't have any counter spells. So at least if I survive this turn, next turn I can play Jace. And right now they're on lockdown thanks to Narset. And the momentum is very, very quickly starting to turn. It only took 14 turns. Actually, maybe 13. And that's perfect, okay? This is exactly what I wanted because now I'm on a four-turn clock <laughs> thanks to the mosquito biting me uh, in the ass repetitively, okay? <clears throat> it was this dude and I think one attack from a food token. So that's like, what, 17 minus 4. So you did 13 damage, I think, something like that, if my math's right. What do you got? All right, now this is perfect because one, it's going straight to the graveyard and they're not drawing a card. They're gaining life, but that's fine. Thank you, Narset. Okay. What do they have for, so they have green, green. They have enough to do that, right? Okay. So here I was actually expecting them to one, two, three. I mean, yeah, they got every single mana combination possible. I was expecting them to uh, escape this. They didn't. So I'm guessing they have some, maybe they didn't want to lose a card. I mean, like getting that on the play would probably be a very big deal because it's pressure. But anyway, they didn't. <laughs> Great draw. Uh, pretty simple here. 
I don't like using Narset. I believe keeping them off of cards is a much bigger deal because obviously they can, you know, replay this. It's going to prevent them from drawing a card. Um, that's the cool thing with Narset. It's not as straightforward as a lot of people seem, especially when we're playing against control matchups. It's like, do you want that extra card or do you want to slow them down so they can't draw? In this scenario, I definitely want to slow them down. Here I'm just playing Jace. Just playing Jace, no big deal. And, oh, that hurts, that hurts, that does. Let's, uh, all right, so I could have bounced this dude, which is kind of pointless because they're just going to bring him back in and then draw a card. Uh, and they would draw a card because it's going to be, that's like the worst play ever, but I'm just going over it in case. Uh, uh, and this is awesome. I don't want Island and Flooded Strand. Uh, if I'm smart, I'd probably do it Flooded Strand and Island. Nope. <laughs> Actually, I am smart. Okay, because I have four life now, so I was thinking I had like one or two life, so that's not a bad plan. Uh, here, now I'm pretty much, let's see, I don't need to do anything. I am the control deck. I like playing the control deck, despite them having all the colors. Anyway, let's carry on. What are you going after? Biting Narset. She doesn't like that. Don't do that. <laughs> the old mosquito bite. Okay. Nothing. Okay. Reason I did this is because I want to protect Narset, and uh, I can always Snapcaster Swords, one of their or their Euro. I could always force a bullet to help with tempo. Uh, I can always bounce it if I need to, even though it take a turn off. Not the best thing to do, but uh, I overall have the best control of the game, obviously. Uh, so I have a really good hand too. This can stop an Ice Fang in case they want to bring in another one. Uh, that was pretty much the biggest reason why I plowed that, because if they did have another one, I have it covered very easily. Okay. Even if I didn't have that, I probably would have Swords it anyway. Upkeep. Flooded Strand. Oops. Going crazy. Okay, so I drew a Flooded Strand, and then I drew a ton of crap. Uh, here is probably just going to be Island, Flooded Strand, Play Flooded Strand. Uh, yeah. Everything here is good. Okay. Then we can fetch for our last island. Okay, so they actually had another Euro, which is fine by me. They don't draw a card, and while that's on the stack, let's tap properly. We don't need our planes, so we're tapping that with the Snapcaster. Then, of course, we're going to Swords this. That's good, now I only have to deal with one of them. Which I have a lot of tempo, or I can create a lot of tempo by countering it, uh, getting more cards with Jace. Uh, so I'm not too worried about that at the moment. I have ways of dealing with that. Gotta click a million times for escape. Come on, you can do it. Still wanna click, okay, so. I chose to end up Force of Willingness. Uh, it's a tempo thing. I can hard cast it. Like I said, this is not the greatest um, uh, play, I guess you could say. I, I don't even know how to explain it. It's like this went to the graveyard. They didn't get a card, but they're playing it from the graveyard, and I'm still countering it. Like, it's probably not the most productive, uh, what's the word, you know, card advantage. I'm not getting card advantage out of it. It's simply tempo. I want to control the board. Uh, next turn, I can put Jit on Snapcaster. I still have Jace. And uh, they conceded after that. So <laughs> that was a crazy game of like starting off with such a horrible hand and using Brainstorm to uh, sculpt my hand and properly choose where I was going to pretty much turn the corner. Well, obviously, getting a couple cards helped me to turn the corner. First and foremost was uh, Judgment. And then I would say two of the Brainstorms. One of those put back like Jit and Batter Skull. The other one put back like Back to Basics and Back to Basics. <laughs> Putting back Back to Basics twice. There's a tongue twister for you. And then pretty much from there, it was a very slow um, kind of turn of events. I was getting very low and I had to make a crucial weird plays like plowing their food token, plowing their damn mosquito. Where are you? Damn mosquito. <laughs> anyway, that was a fun game. Uh, a crazy game, nevertheless. So that was game one. I'm going to show you what I did for sideboarding before we move to game two. All right, so my deck is slightly different. Uh, I just messed around with it, and I took out the Volcanic Island used to be in there, and the Spell Snare used to be there. I just interchanged those. So anyway, this is what it looks like now. So cards I am bringing in. My goodness, yes. 
Yes, yes, yes. Uh, some people like bringing in surgical against Euro. Uh, not a big fan. I mean, you could maybe if you want to use it on an Oko, uh, you know, just to get rid of a specific annoying card. I chose not to. Anyway, uh, Force of Negation, I want extra protection against their Planeswalkers. Uh, Click, I do not like in the face of Ice Fang. They have a lot of those. Um, Rest in Peace is an option. It, if you think about it, it completely turns off Drown in the Lock. Uh, it turning off Euro, obviously, and aside from that, it is going to turn off my Snapcasters. Sometimes I will like that. Like I do bring this in a lot of times when I'm still using Snapcaster. I feel I'm I'm personally going to get more value out of me using my Snapcaster decks that use Dread Horde and like Tarmogoyf and maybe Drown in the Lock, like Strifeful Pile or maybe something like that. Um, that other card that you can escape, it's like one black, uh, like that will turn, Rest in Peace will turn off that card. I didn't see them playing that. If they had a few more, I actually might bring in Rest in Peace. But this is one of those decks where having Relic of Progenitus would be really helpful because not only can you mess with their graveyard, but it cantrips. So it, it does a lot for one simple card. You just got to use it effectively, obviously, because it can shut off your graveyard. Just something to keep in mind. So either way, looks like we only have five cards we're bringing in. Let's do this. Five cards we are taking out. Goodbye. Goodbye. Taking out eight planes. 20 is fine. Uh, and I think what I did here, two cards. I might have gone, let's see what else. Okay, so this is good. I like this because it can pick off the damn Ice Fangs. So it's it's not the worst in the world. Plus, I like the card advantage from what you saw before. When you get it and you can shuffle it back. Given the fact that these games tend to go long, I do keep it in more specifically to get card advantage out of it. Plus, being able to pick off their Ice Fangs is nice. Uh, all of these are awesome. Awesome. And I believe I took out a Force or two. Given the fact that I have Blast. Um... If you want to be a little bit more protective, you could probably keep in a force and maybe take out a swords. I mean, like we saw before, swordsing Ice Fang isn't that great. Uh, a lot of times they can bring in Leovold or maybe his main deck. Swordsing him sucks. Uh, but I think what I did is just keep four in there uh, and go like this. So that's pretty much how the deck was set up for game number two. So let's go to that. Okay, so this hand's actually not that bad. Here's what I love about it. I have a lot of mana. Uh, mana is great in... Uh, control decks, as you just saw. I have Ponder. I do have Ponder and Force Protection. I have Pyro, Bla Pyro Blast, which is uh, great against them. The one little nitpick I don't like is that Volcanic is in my hand. I like usually surprising them. I don't like playing it out, then it's obvious I have Blast. But either way, I'm not throwing this back. I want the card advantage. Uh, as long as the game drags on, I can stop... Um, what's it called? Euro? Not Euro. I, I mean, I could stop Euro with that if I want. I can stop Oko. Uh, I have Force Backup. I have Ponder to find other stuff. So, very easy keep. And the good thing about playing this is that there's nothing really I want to counter on turn two. Usually it's going to be a end of the turn Ice Fang. Some of these decks might play... Um, was it library? Not library. Library of Alexandria, yes. Uh, Sylvan Library. They might be playing that. I don't think they're playing Counterbalance. So, um, with that being said, I should have taken that off. Okay, so what I want to do here is simply uh, ponder with an island. Given the fact that I wouldn't have anything to uh, Pyroblast, I'm obviously going to be hiding that. Okay, so this is actually a really good one. I have a lot of mana and I can, I can curve out to that. In case they ended up playing a uh, Sylvan Library, what I wanted to do here is put Ponder in my hand, then Counterspell after that and Force a Negation. I can curve out very nicely. So this will be in my hand. Next turn, I can Counter something, Counterspell something. Next turn, I can Force of Negation something, plus I'll have a Volcanic Island. This is allowing me to pretty much control the game while building out my mana base and have cards to be able to you know look for anything else that I need. So this is really a good spot to be in. Okay, I actually, I actually put it the proper way I was saying to do it. It's funny when I always like say, yeah, I should do it this way, and then I do it the opposite. That's magic for you. Okay, that's perfect, which means they're not playing live. Library, Sylvan Library, yes. Not Library of Alexandria. I remember my friend when we were playing Magic, probably around like the Urza's Legacy. I think he bought one of those for like $100. I wonder how much they are now. A Library of Alexandria, that is. Okay, so let's look at what we got. We drawn? Come on. Okay, there we go. So we knew what it was. Either way, uh, still important stuff to be talked about here. Now, I don't want to play Valk yet because 
Uh, I still want to hide this because if I play an island, that means I can counterspell anything. And then I have forced backup should they counter the counterspell. So here I'm just going to do island. And remember, I want that force of negation, so I don't want to play any fetch lands yet. And that's perfect, okay? They don't want to play anything, that's fine. It's very scary playing against that, okay? So, <laughs> it's very scary playing against this. So here I actually do want to play my Valk, despite the fact I wish it was, you know, just like a polluted delta where I could fetch for him and be like, surprise. The reason I want to play that is because I will not only have counter spell up and pyroblast, but that's the biggest reason. I mean, I could hard cast a force of negation. I probably wouldn't do that because I want to be able to have counter spell and pyroblast to fight over what spell they might be playing. For example, the next turn they can definitely, if they play another land, they can Oko and Veil of Summer, uh, and that would be able to cover that very easily. So here I'm pretty much protecting myself from anything that can, you know, obviously turn the game. Uh, this is one of the reasons why I see people saying like Oko is really bad to play against. It is, but like, if you had a true name nemesis, I swear, like, I'll see someone play a true name nemesis in this position, and then, like, someone will play Oko, and then you'll have to, like, Force of Will pitching, say, this, and then they'll, like, Veil of Summer them. Like, they put themselves in these really bad spots where they're either losing card advantage or setting themselves up to lose. Right now, time is definitely on our side. This does nothing. We know it, it bites at us for about 17 and a half turns before we plow it. Uh, that's fine. See, like, this is another thing, too. Like, this deck, you would say, is much more controlling. It gets more value, but it's about kind of knowing when to take risks, when not to, you know, when to make your move. Okay, so let's talk about this once again. I want to Pyroblast this one because it's blue, uh, and if I do that, that means I have Counterspell Backup. Uh, if I Counterspell this, Counter, and then they do something else, say if they have a Veil of Summer, I'm screwed, then I got a two-for-one myself, so... Uh, very important there, plus Pyroblast hits this very nicely. We want to do it on the stack because if we let it live, they draw a card. We don't want that. What you got? Force of Will. Ooh, Pitching Oko. Very nice. Let's counterspell that. And I chose to counter this. Okay, that. Counter that. Okay. Uh, I'm not sure if there's any merit to letting that just resolve and then countering that. Um, sometimes you can actually mess people up. Like if they had a fluster storm, they might click on the wrong card. Anyway, uh, that's what I chose to do. <laughs> I just hit one as if that was going to continue. Um, all of that goes through. Cool. We still have great backup and protection, so I like where we are there. And look at this. They have three cards. We have five, and we're about to draw one. Okay? See, very important. Now... Whew. I think I pondered here first. Go ahead and ponder here first. There we go. Yeah, good. It's just lagging a little. That's why I click on. Okay, so this isn't all that bad. Uh, True Name Nemesis is pretty good against them. If they have a Plague Engineer, it's not. If they have Dead of Winter, it's not. Uh, but aside from that, what I wanted to do here was create a True Name Nemesis sandwich. So it's going to be Brainstorm, True Name, Brainstorm, okay? Because I have two fetches in my hand, and Brainstorm is going to get really powerful, especially for the fact that I could always get a Stoneforge Mystic. I can get an equipment. If they kill it, I can shuffle it away. So Brainstorm is going to be very helpful. True Name is not going to be too bad either. And if they shuffle it away, I'm not going to lose sleep at night over it. So it's going to be a True Name uh, sandwich. There we go. Brainstorm. Let's play a land. Now we can hard cast Force of Negation if needed. And we're still going to have a Brainstorm open as well, which is great. See, like, this is another spot where someone probably would have played Stoneforge there, and then you get a two-for-one yourself. Like, it just, it just doesn't have to be that way. Now we can Force of Negation. Like, if they had a Veil of Summer, yes, then I'm going to obviously pitch my other Force to it, but... Nope. So now we have a lot of decisions that we can make on the next turn. I mean, like we can brainstorm, we can shuffle, we can we can brainstorm, stoneforge shuffle. Oh my goodness! <laughs> I think we'll just play that. Let's do that, okay? Given the fact that I just force of willed their Oko and they didn't have any fight back, uh, I'm guessing that they don't have anything to protect themselves against. So let's do this and let's. Once again, we're tapping the Tundra here because uh, now I can Red Blast anything. They don't know that I don't have a Red Blast, but when you keep it up and they've seen it, uh, it makes it like, oh crap, they could have this, obviously. What do you got? Brainstorm, sure. See, like that last game, they were like, they were force of willing to Brainstorm, 
Here I wanna, if, if I'm going to do anything, it's gonna be the payoff, and look at that. That's perfect. Uh, what'd they pitch? Uh, Ice Fang. So they have no cards in their hand. I am force of willing that. I am pitching Brainstorm, and they have had enough. And just like that, 18 and a half color control Oko Snowblade. Actually, they don't play Blade. They should play Blade, but uh, that was that game. Mm. <laughs> I don't even know what to say after that. It was, a, it was a fun game. That first game was awesome, just to show you how you can like, really turn the game around when you're like on your back foot. I think the most important thing here is to make sure that you get your land drops. It's super important. Both games, I was hitting my land drops. That allowed me to pretty much come back uh, over time and find the right cards, make a lot of weird plays that kind of looked wrong on paper, so to speak, but end up helping me win the game. Same thing here. Like a lot of times, if you're going to be playing aggressive, I could have pretty much lost this game here by either you know playing out a true name or a stoneforge because in that case i would have had to you know use my force of will pitch another blue card uh and by doing that they would have had more cards left over and been able to probably play one of their okos but uh that's that game hope you enjoyed it and uh, have an awesome day